Did you know that the dark skin and hair that a lot of people have is due to production of a lot of melanin? This melanin is produced by the cells within the skin. These cells are known as melanocytes. It therefore goes without saying that should melanocytes fail to produce enough melanin then instead of the skin being dark or the hair being dark the skin will form some smooth white patches to indicate that melanin is no longer being produced this is a condition that a lot of people have this condition is known as vitiligo today Karim's clinic delves deeper into vitiligo, its causes, the types, symptoms, and how to manage this pigmentation. What is vitiligo? Vitiligo is a disorder in which smooth patches appear on one's skin. These patches are white in color and bright Usually, as we have mentioned, we have what we call melanocytes. Melanocytes are, with, are cells within the skin. Melanocytes are tasked with production of melanin. The melanin gives our skin the dark color. Somebody is already thinking, do the white people have melanin? Do the light-skinned people have melanin? Yes, it is worth noting that everyone has got an almost equal number of melanocytes. In other words, the cells that produce melanin. However, your skin pigmentation or color depends on how much melanin is produced. We could be having the same number of melanocytes, but our melanocytes are not going to produce the same amount of melanin. So the whites have melanin, only that now their melanin is produced in smaller quantities. It therefore goes without saying, while Africans also or rather, while Africans are affected by vitiligo, whites are also affected by vitiligo. Usually, we don't see many whites with the vitiligo because they, they are light in color. Their skin is light in color as compared to the Africans that have darker skin due to a lot of melanin. So it is easier to see white patches on a dark skin rather than white skin. It is worth noting again that 1% of the world's population has vitiligo. Usually, it starts on the hands, it can move to the forearm or the feet and even the face. When, when do we realize that we have vitiligo? At what age? Does it have age? Is it contagious? If I have vitiligo, can I through contact, um, uh, infect or spread it to another person. No, vitiligo, you can't spread vitiligo because it is never contagious. So you are safe living with somebody who has vitiligo. You are safe greeting them, hugging them, and even having one as a spouse, that does not make you a person with vitiligo. A large percentage of these people with vitiligo develop it before the age of 40. Almost half develop it before the age of 20. It is associated with a genetic implication. Sometimes you realize that about 20% of people suffering vitiligo had their parents or their grandparents or along that genetic line, there were cases of vitiligo. But that is not to mean that that is an automatic cause because there are still people whose fathers had vitiligo, but they do not have vitiligo. What are the types of vitiligo? If you look at people, you see some people with...
patches on both sides of the body if it is the hands left and right if it is the palm it is the palm and the back of the hand if it is the left cheek and the right cheek that type of vitiligo is known as generalized vitiligo it is the most common the second type of vitiligo is known as segmental vitiligo on segmental vitiligo only one side is affected if it is your left finger left hand it remains the left hand if it is the left side of the face it remains and then we have the mucosa Mu Mucosa vitiligo now affects the mucous membrane and also the mouth. So you, you realize now that there, there are those patches that originate from the mouth. They begin within the mouth and the mucous membrane. That is called a mucosal vitiligo. Then we have a focal one. Focal vitiligo is where it develops in a very tiny area, a very small area. And then it does not spread for about two years. And trichome, trichome now causes a bull's eye, something in the shape of a bull's eye, where we have a white patch in the middle. And as you move outward, the area becomes lighter in pigment until the last part, most outer part, remains the natural color of your skin. So, the symptom of vitiligo is those white patches, as we've mentioned. So somebody could have experienced the vitiligo and they don't know what these things are. Some, somebody is black, like you are dark, you have, you have a dark skin and you are experiencing white patches and you are wondering, am I going to be white throughout the body? Now, if you are experiencing such or your eyelashes are turning white or your hair is already turning white um, that could be as a result of vitiligo though the hair turning white sometimes is also a case of albinism and even your eye the air turning the your eye turning your eyelashes turning into white could still be a case of um albinism however the difference here is albinism is is, is a condition you are born with you give birth to a child with albinism but um vitiligo is something that catches up with you later in the age you know like uh, at 20 be below 20 uh, just before you attain 40 years of age that is the difference between now vitiligo and albinism both of them are conditions so now that we have seen what happens what causes this albi this vitiligo most of the time the belief the main belief here is you have your antibodies your antibodies or what we call the white blood cells the white blood cells blood cells are known to defend you against disease causing pathogens or any foreign body that tends to get into your body system so what happens is sometimes the white blood cells do not know how to differentiate between the good cells and the bad cells. So sometimes they just attack your own cells. In this case, we have melanocytes. The antibodies just decide, or the white blood cells just decide that, you know what, today we want to attack the melanocytes. When the mel melanocytes are attacked, they stop manufacturing or producing melanin now in such a case the pigmentation stops the black dark pigment pigmentation stops you now begin to see um patches white patches throughout your body that condition that the body fights its own cells that condition is called an autoimmune condition so one cause is autoimmune condition the next is genetic about 30 percent about 30 percent 20 to 30 percent are um, genetically acquired and alas this is a shocking one and um, uh, emotional stress and physical stress can also cause it so most of the time you're told 
try so hard so that you don't go through physical and emotional stress because you never know a combination of all these things could come and then you suffer vitiligo either way stress whether emotional or physical is not um, um is not accepted do not allow yourself to get stressed to a point where you get vitiligo. Somebody is asking themselves, I've been stressed for so long a time, in fact, 10 years, and I've not seen this. You don't have other risk factors. Um, and then you never know. You never know. What are the treatments? How do we treat vitiligo? Somebody is saying, I already have it. I want to put it across that vitiligo that is less than two years is very easier to treat less than two years very easier to treat but by, uh, above two years they can still be treated but now it will take a longer process so we have what we call light therapy or phototherapy in phototherapy as part of the treatment there is a booth that gives beams of U uva and uvb so you can always be um, uh, when you reach maybe the, 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 the phototherapy center, you'll be, you'll be told to enter some booth. Then that booth will radiate the um, UV or UVB, depending on uh, um, the choice of treatment. Then th the radiations could scare away the white blood cells from appearing on the surface and push them back where they should be so that will that would bring back your correct color now when it comes to taking there are there are elements or what we call um, um this is vitamins that we can always take so that we reduce these cases of um, um, discoloration or vitiligo. They come in form of supplements. Now, I would advise that if we can get... I'm actually advising on these supplements for now. I rarely advise on antibiotics. Why? 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 Because I could mention antibiotics and people go misuse them. Remember, antibiotics, antibiotics are not like supplements supplements you can always use anyhow for correct purpose that is without too much of effects but antibiotics when used wrongly they kill the microbes they kill the good bacteria in the body as i'd said before so always for this um if if um if you really need your color back vitamin d3 vitamin d3 is a very good supplement you can always take it Three thirty-five thousand international international units. And um, where you are given, where, you, where when you go to buy, when you go buying uh, vitamin D three, you'll always tell them, or they will always tell you, um, uh, if you ask for thirty-five thousand of international units, you will be given and you will be told it will be prescribed for you, and you'll be told this is what it is. Then you can always take zinc also. Uh, 100 milligrams and copper 1500 micro grams so if you want to apply anything on your skin also you can always use copper cream now sometimes ahead as we progress i'll delve deeper into vitiligo the aspect of enzymes taking place I mean, taking part in all this, the aspect of hydrogen peroxide being produced within some reaction within the body. So for now, I would say just use copper cream, apply it on your, on your skin, the affected area only, and you would see that. Now, because this is a disease or this is a condition that is caused by an autoimmune um, situation usually it is always good to fast it should be periodically prolonged fasting and what happens when you fast your immune system regenerate that is why fasting is very important as well 
do not fast if you know that your body has got um uh, issues and when you stay angry when you stay hungry it will affect you especially people with the stomach ulcers it's always not good to stay hungry so make sure you follow what is discussed appropriately that is all the time we had we will still discuss more about vitiligo in our next lesson as our channel grows so once the channel grows we will now go deeper into explanations of how these things happen the science in them the biological processes catabolic and anabolic processes in them today that is all we had and i want to say thank you for listening